Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. The Bulls continue to be on a roll. They're number 25 in the nation, 31 and 10, and right at the top of the American Athletic Conference, 5 and 1 on the season. Coach, a good series against Houston this weekend. Bulls got the first two. Houston wins game three. Let's go back to the Friday night game. Erica Nunn, as she has done pretty much all season long, just dominant in the circle with the two hit complete game shutout. You know, she's, um, for lack of anything else, she's really attacking the hitters. You know, and, and when you're ahead in the count, uh, the majority of the at bats through the whole day, uh, you got a great opportunity to uh, kind of lead the hitters into what you want to do. And she's been pitching the contact real well. And I think she maybe only had about four or five strikeouts in that game. But the big deal was you didn't walk anybody. You know, when you're not walking people, you're giving us a great chance, you know, to get through their lineup because <laughs> less it be known that, you know, the team that gets 21 outs the fastest is the team that usually wins. And she's been doing a great job of that for us. Well, it was a tight game midway through, one to nothing Bulls, when Mia Fung broke it open with a two-run homer over the left field wall. Nine home runs. What's the secret of the power? Is it bat speed, compact swing, or what's leading to this power? Well, she's, a, you know, she's got dynamite in her hands. You know, she, her and Spivey are those two kids that when the ball comes off their bat, it comes off differently. And Eric is actually the same way. And uh, but Mia has is so sinewy in her muscles and, and and the length of her muscles are so good. That's that's all you know determined way before she even started playing. But uh, her ability to relax and, um, and and keep all the worries out as a young woman playing this game is, is the key to her success. And and when she does that and she plays free minded, you know you're in pretty good shape. You know the, the toughest acre to cultivate is the six inches between the ears. And for her, she's maturing into that and. As you see her grow, uh, you're hoping that she's going to get there. And I think she has a lot sooner than a lot of people in her sophomore year. But you want to get her to where that conference level is of a Monica Santos, of you know, Erica Nunn, of a Leanne Spivey type of deal. So you can just go out and play the game and, and find the ball and let the ball dictate to you what you're going to do instead of trying to force things. You know? and, and if Mia gets that down, you know, she's in great shape. So Julie's a good one to look at, too. You know, Julie just plays for fun. And we're trying to get Mia just to understand it's a game of fun. You know? and, don't get devastated with a bad at bat. I mean, if she does that, we're going to be in good shape. It was fun Saturday night as well. We had to wait for the fun, 90-minute rain delay, but the Bulls come up with a 6-3 to three victory, and I thought the relief appearance mm. by Susan Wysocki was really critical in this game. You know, you take a look at what she has done this year, um, and yet she had a decent win-loss record last year, but she is actually controlling the batters now. You know, and, and the more that she continues to work on her off-speed pitch, it'll set up her velocities. And, and she throws the ball very hard. You know, Susan's one of those kids that's a 71, 72-plus kid. But if she can, can learn that she doesn't have to throw it 100% all the time, velocity-wise speaking, that she can move the ball around, make it move, um, get a batter to get themselves out with two strikes, you know, 0-2 at 1-2 count. So she's learning to pitch, and I think Coach Moore uh, has been relentless on all our pitching staff of understanding that it's about pitching. It's not about trying to throw it by somebody because you're not going at this level. You know, you you can take a look at the Houston pitchers. One kid threw the ball 74, 75 miles an hour on the board out there. I mean, it's probably the hardest pitch we faced all year, velocity-wise. But she wasn't getting it by our kids because it was she was too straight. So once you start moving it, it makes a little bit of trouble. And Susan's getting there. Now the Bulls, 23 wins in a row, nation's longest winning streak, but Houston does get game three by a 5-2 to two score, and Coach, I thought this kind of showed what a game of, of minute things softball can be. A couple of throws that got away led to some unearned runs, and all of a sudden it was too big of a mountain to climb to come back. Yeah, um, and the percentages um, over a course of a season with 18- to 20-year-olds I hope everybody can appreciate, because you know, we certainly did not appreciate the, the, the length of the, the winning streak until it was over. And, and that's a good thing for us to not appreciate because we, we didn't think about it. This is we're not going to think about dropping the last game. But um, for people to realize how difficult that is, what you have to have to get that, you've got to play pretty close to flawless ball. You have to have good bounces go your way and, and stay healthy uh, and get good pitching. Um, and, and we did for that stretch, you know, that five week, four and a half week stretch. And to think about it that way, instead of just 22, 23 games, think about it as a five week stretch of playing at a very, very high level. And um, from the media standpoint and the fan standpoint, you know, every day our kids come out to the ballpark, they're hearing, hey, you know, 17, you know, 18, 19, 20. And uh, they did a great job of handling that type of stuff. And um, that showed me a lot of maturity. And you can't get a streak like that unless you're mature in your approach to the game. So once again, 
we're going to go back out next time we hit the field and just play against the game and not play against the scoreboard and not play against statistics, but play it against the game. Longest win streak in Bulls history. They are 31 and 10 overall. From Puerto Rico to Great Britain and the USA, Bulls players and coaches are representing their countries on a national level. We'll take a look at that experience when we come back on the Coach Ken Erickson Show. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. to deliver that pitch to home. Oh, two to Fong, waved at and miss. Strike three, that's four Ks. I can remember this very clearly because, you know, it's something that you wait for for so long. I remember laying in bed the morning that we were supposed to get the email. You know, you don't even get the phone call, you get the email. And I just remember, like, crossing my fingers and taking a deep breath, opening it up, and I saw my name on the roster. It was everything to me, uh, getting that call up, because it's been a dream of mine to play at the highest level in softball. I was very proud because I know I'm American and also English from my mom, but being able to represent my country like that and in my heritage, it was really, really fun. I called my dad and I just, I burst out crying because it was one of those things that like, it's just unreal to realize that you're going to be putting on the Team USA jersey. When I'm in a Great Britain uniform and you hear uh, our national anthem, there's a different pride that comes with that. You're representing something so much bigger than you. You're representing a country. You're representing yourself, but you're representing your family and representing everyone that loves the sport of softball. Just being able to play for Puerto Rico and being able to represent my family and make them proud is something that I take with every time I step onto that field. I think one of the biggest things with my, that I bring with my experience is that I compete as a pitcher, I'm going to beat every batter or at least give our team a shot. That's the thing that I'm trying to instill in our pitching staff the most is that you're not going to go out there and win every time, but we're dang sure going to go out and compete. I think I'm just constantly involved and like constantly meeting new people and learning new things from different teams. The passion that I have for the game, I think that's something that I try and bring to the field every day and practice the games. I come out here and I work as hard as I can because I want to make myself better. Whether I'm in that starting lineup or not, I want to make the people that are in that lineup better. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the Bulls run. That's been a big part of this program, Coach, playing on a national level, your experience in coaching. Now you have an assistant coach that is going through that as an active player and a great opportunity for USF players to do something really special. Yeah, I, that, we must be recruiting uh, you know, the right kids. I mean, that's where it's at. If you're representing, you know, Monica Santos represents Puerto Rico and she has for a while as a junior player and, and then in Pan Am competition and World Championship competition, Lauren Evans was on the uh, Junior World Championship stage last year with Great Britain. Um, Aston Donovan played with the junior team that won the gold medal, you know, in Oklahoma City last year. And then Jess Moore has been playing, you know, for the United States for the last three, four years. And 
Um, and then you had Sarah Nevin still with that program. But um, yeah, it's, it says a lot about those kids' ability to play at a very, very high level. And, and that international level is a whole different ball game than college. And um, college is the minor leagues leading up to the professional levels and leading up into the national team levels and the international team levels. So it's a higher level ball. Uh, there's less mistakes at that point. Um, so can you keep your heart rate under control? Can you keep it in perspective that it's still, you know, 60 feet, it's still 43 feet to the mound, those type of things. But for those players, it's a great honor for, Uni for University of South Florida, fantastic opportunity to, to boast about, you know, that if, if you come here, you're gonna get player developed to play in those type of programs. So everything's working out really well. Now the Bulls have a quick turnaround now. They will have two games on Wednesday against Bethune-Cookman. This was originally a single game, now playing two, starting at 5 p.m. And then the UConn Huskies are in for conference play this weekend. So the good news, a chance to stay home, but a lot of work ahead also. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because it is a lot of work. You know, you've postured yourself in a position right now where you're, you're uh, amongst some of the teams in the country that people are gunning for. And so when you take the field against anybody, you know, you have a bigger target on your back. Well, you earned it, so now defend it. You know, and, and beside the fact of going out there and trying to defend your status, I think you still need to remain offensive and go after the game. Um, if we can keep that in perspective, we're pretty good. Ken Shire Jackson, who played for us, you know, and she was one of the, the crowd favorites here for a long time. I used to ask her who we playing against today. And she said, I don't know, coach, just a bunch of girls with a different uniform, and that's all I know. And so if we can keep that type of perspective, I think we're in good shape. You know, that's a matured perspective, and, and I like what I see. Top 25 program plays right here. Come out and see them Wednesday against Bethune-Cookman, Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the University of Connecticut. Coach, congratulations on another good week. We'll see you again soon. Good week. Good week. Head coach of the Bulls, Ken Erickson. We will be back with another edition of the Ken Erickson Show coming up soon on GoUSFBulls.com.